Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Boy, when the interest rates went up, some cities got hit hard. Let's take a look. Welcome. Let's take a look at what cities really got hammered when prices went up. Let's uh, first start overall and show you what's going on with the market. As you know, the peak was May and then interest rates took their toll. Interest rates spiked up and away we went. We started coming down. And uh, so how far we go down is anybody's guess. It has leveled off for now. Uh, we'll take a peek at that in a few moments, but let's let's look my city here because this this really got interesting. Um, if you take a look at let me get my magnifying glass here, city of Coolidge up 1.6 cents June, down 20% for the year. Um, some of the areas like uh, Cave Creek seem to have fared um, down 8.9 and up 13.1 for the year. And you've got, let's see here, let's take a look at uh, Paradise Valley, down 6% since June and up 2.4% for the year. And Chandler, got hammered down 13.6 since the beginning of the year there's Chandler right there 13.6 still pretty much flat for the year Fountain Hills plunged 19.8 from the peak and they're down 2.1 for the year so you can see that uh, some of these cities have have gotten slammed pretty pretty hard um, Sun Lakes down 14.6 since the peak Arizona City down 21% Buckeye down 11.9 so I'm not going to go through the whole list city by city but basically what we're seeing is that uh, um, all the gains from 2022 are now gone and the pricing that we have out there now is at December 2021 levels uh, not anywhere near erasing what we saw in 20 in 2021 but there's an article by the uh, Wall Street Journal that says why this housing downturn isn't like the last one and we can agree or disagree with this number, but one of the charts that they put up here was equity. And they're showing the aftermath of the financial crisis in 2008 had all these people upside down. And the housing bubble that we had right here, there was some equity, but not anywhere near what we see now when we compare it to debt. And that's because of the low interest rates. The low interest rates people bought in May, and they're, they're out there getting, you know, 3% mortgages, not the ones that bought in May, but the ones that bought in uh, March and April or February and uh, closed in May. So, so there's a lot of equity still out there. Now, at the current rate, interest rates went up, shocked us, went up like 7.1, 7.2. Now they're down to 6.1. New construction's doing very well. They're able to offer rates at like 4.9 because they're buying down the rate. Uh, resale sellers can buy down the rate too but you know a lot of them just don't have deep enough pockets to offer you what a builder can give you but it's very clear that we're in a big housing correction right now and uh, you know do we expect to get down to 2019 levels that's a pretty hefty hit and I know a lot of you out there are waiting for that so that's uh that's pretty rough that's going to have to be somewhere along a 50 percent decline from the peak that we had I don't see that. I see a leveling off somehow, but there's going to be some numbers that I'm going to have to see to where I can really see which way this is going. Well, the central bank has made it very clear that there's a severe imbalance and we have to get it balanced again. And that balance will come with a combination of a sweet spot between house prices coming down and interest rates once again coming down to a level that doesn't fuel inflation. So they're not going to make a move until they're confident that inflation is done. And there are so many debates on that. Right now, the market does not believe them. So they're pushing back. Somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to lose. On The market's been more accurate than the Federal Reserve the past few years. Um, so they're kind of, if you were a betting man, I'd bet on the market. Uh, but that doesn't mean that home prices won't still decline. And it does mean that there are some bargains out there and there will be some bargains. We're still trying to clean up the mess with the iBuyers here in Arizona. They went way too exuberant at the beginning of the year. And they've still got about 1,100 to 1,500 homes that they're trying to offload. They're trying all kinds of trickery out there to get it done. 
Um, you know, they're being honest about it. They're just pulling the homes off the market and about 182 of them. And they're going to spruce them up and then put them back on. Essentially, they're doing what they should have done in the first place. Um, is that pulling prices down? Well, they are 11% of our inventory in the price range between four and 600,000. So are they pulling home prices down? I think there's enough downward home pressure on listings anywhere that they're not really having an impact. Because keep in mind, they came in way too hot. So while you see on a percentage basis that they really got hammered, if you were to compare their prices with where everybody else was, um, it took them a while to get where everybody else was. And now everybody's kind of going down together. We're all, they're all sinking on the same ship. So I don't think that Open Door or OfferPad are driving home prices down. Whenever prices start going down, we always like to look for a scapegoat and try to say, ah, it's those guys. I remember I had an agent in uh, Southern California and it was in the 90s and real estate had collapsed. It was 1994. Uh, had a pretty big downturn because of defense contract uh, reductions and that was really driving the economy in California. And we had an agent, just a door knocker. He was always going around on Saturdays and Sundays and visiting with people. And I'd be out working in my yard and he'd stop by and talk to me and then he'd talk to the neighbor and everybody knew him. He was doing what's called farming the area and you could count on him every Saturday and Sunday just walking through the neighborhood to see how you're doing. He'd tell you how the market was and I was getting a corporate relocation, was going to be leaving Southern California. So guess who I decided to list with? This guy. Knew the area. He worked hard. Really wanted to make sure that everybody in the neighborhood knew where the market was. I knew where the market was when I was selling, unlike when I was buying. I was clueless, but it was pretty clear that my value had eroded tremendously. And if I was going to be able to relocate to the new job, even though I was getting some coverage from the corporation that was moving me, I needed to list my house at a price that would sell. So I did. I listed it at like 153 or something. And the neighbors were accusing this realtor of personally driving down prices in that neighborhood. It's all his fault. And I said, well, if if he was driving down the prices and they were way too low, wouldn't people be bidding those prices up? He's just marking them realistically. He's coming and saying, here's what the market is telling us. Let me know if you want to sell. Now, when prices were going way up, I'll bet they were blaming him for bidding up prices. So everybody kind of looks, at, looks for a scapegoat. Prices are down. They're going to continue to go down. They're going down now at a slower, slower clip. All eyes are on January. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that like button. Smash it. Thank you.